I think it's about time we got back to work on the guitar amplifier. And that came out all wrong, but I'm not going to retake this shot. So, now before we start, I said in the previous video that I might adjust the plate current. Well, I'm not going to do that because I measured the voltage and the current going into this thing. And with this particular transformer, when this is all warmed up, that pulls the voltage down to about 200 volts. So, if I increase the plate current, that would only pull the vo um, voltage down even more, so I'm just going to leave it where it is. When it's idle, it's about 50 milliamps, about 55 milliamps. So, yeah, I'm just going to leave it right there. Although I have learned something, a very important lesson. When you're measuring voltage, make sure you have your meter probes in the volts jack, not the amps jack. Try measuring the voltage coming out of this transformer, little realising that I had my meter in the amps jack completely melted one of my leads. So that's going to need to be replaced. Anyways, I've got the preamp built because if you remember in the previous video, we didn't quite have enough gain. And I know it's been a while since I've done the last video about this, about maybe a month or so, but I just haven't had the time. Anyway, it's based on this circuit here. The only difference is we've got a potentiometer, one end connected there, the other end connected there, and the wiper, you know, is where our output is going to be. Oh, and we don't have this capacitor or this resistor. Oh yeah, and something else I forgot to say. So I'm going to power up this circuit. Now, we should, if this is working properly, we should have about half the supply voltage here. Then we're going to put a signal into it, see how much gain we get. And stuff. Okay then. Well, let's see what this does. I know there's a huge amount of space between the tube and the meter, but it's quite a rigid wire. So I've got a little 1K resistor between the cathode and the ground, so that's just going to serve as a dummy input. Okay, so I'm going to turn the filament on first. I'm going to bring up the voltage slowly, so we avoid any hot spots. Is it even coming on? I'm not seeing any sign of any glow. Oh, no, never mind, it is glowing. I know it doesn't look like it's doing anything on the camera, but... Right, so we're going to turn on the high voltage, so we can see what the supply voltage is. Now it's going to be about 300 volts, which is probably overdoing it a little bit, but... You know, just got to wait for it to warm up, because it is a tube-based supply. Alright, here comes the voltage. Let's see, 286 so far. 289. We're standing by at the power switch just to make sure in case anything goes wrong. Okay, so we're at about 290 volts and it seems to have stabilized there. All right. So we know what our supply voltage is. Let's just wait for that to bleed down. So our supply voltage is 290 volts. Now let's put this at our output, which should be about halfway. Right, let's turn that power on. Let's see what we get. Okay, it seems to be petering out at about... Yeah, I'd say that's about right. It's not far off. 149 volts. I think we had 290 volts. So that's close enough. I mean, I'll be about 145, I think, would be halfway, and we've got 149. So, yeah, I think that's, uh, I think we're pretty much all set. So, the next thing to do, well, the next thing to do is turn the power off so I don't shock myself on anything. The well, next thing to do is we'll apply a signal to this and see if we get any amplification. 
Right, so, I've got my little homemade signal generator connected up to the valve's grid. We seem to have a little bit of a problem. The valve isn't on at the moment, or well, the grid's on, but I haven't turned the high voltage on. And sound wave isn't all that good, but I think that might be because we have just, you know, a little bit of voltage coming off the grid. You know, because of all those electrons collecting there, so I'm just going to put a capacitor between this and that. And hopefully that will sort that little problem out. Capacitor! Yeah, that seems to have sorted it out. Right, so I'm going to turn the high voltage on. I'm also going to turn the scale of channel 2 down, because I'm expecting this to amplify quite considerably, so... Channel 1 is 2 volts um, per division, channel 2 is 20 volts per division. Let's turn on the high voltage and see what happens. So, channel 2 should be coming up any second when the high voltage warms up. Oh, it should be. Is it on? Yeah, it is on. Oh, you know, it would really help if you actually connected your scope to the thing that you're trying to measure. I find things tend to make more sense that way. Okay, this is attempt number two, with the scope this time hooked up to the valve's output, as well as what's going into the valve. High voltage is on. So, let's see what we get. Ah, here it comes. Look at that. I'm not exactly sure how much amplification we've got, but... Let me see if we can... move that a little better, so... We've got about 20, 40, 60, 80... Um, I have to count again, hang on. 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, hmm, almost 120 volts swing there, so that's pretty good. And we're only putting in about 2 volts peak to peak, so, yeah, actually 4 volts peak to peak. So we're putting about 4 volts in, and we're getting almost, what was it now, almost 120 volts out? Actually, I think it is pretty much dead on 120 volts, yeah. So we've got 4 volts peak to peak going in and 120 volts peak to peak coming out. So I'd say we're getting some quite considerable gain. I've built it and it's working. So I decided to put this um, as the actual input tube and leave everything else as it was because it was just easier to do it that way. Anyway, it's on, and right now, I have it connected up to this microphone. And this very crappy speaker. Which you might remember from a video way, 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 way back. But anyway, when I speak into the microphone, I'm sure you can tell that it is picking up the sound pretty well. So, next thing to do is hook this up to a guitar and hear how it sounds. Obviously I will have to turn the volume down a little bit because you know, I've got a bit of a problem here. Got a very loose cable. Also, we need to ground a lot of things because just touching some of these parts makes it make weird noises. Hmm, that's weird. Last time I touched a transformer, it made a strange little buzzy noise. It's not doing it now. All right, well let's just hear how that. All right, well let's just hear how that sounds. I've got the volume turned up about half. Let's just. Play a few chords here, see how that sounds. 
Sounds pretty good to me. I think the next thing to do is put this in to a cabinet. Well, I think I'm gonna have to call it quits for now because I've come to a realization that there just is not enough room in this cabinet for all the stuff that I want to put in there. Thought it would be big enough. As soon as I tried to put this transformer in, Pity really because I made a great sounding amplifier and I don't have a cabinet to put it in. Okay, so here it is. This is the finished amplifier. Minus the power supply and the speaker, of course. You might have noticed that I've upped these resistors here, here, and here to 2.2 mega ohms just to lighten the load on the driver tube or valve or whatever you want to call it. And here's our extra stage of amplification. You might have noticed that there's no grid resistor or DC blocking capacitor because don't need them. The guitar's coil is gonna serve also as the grid resistor and since there's no DC coming off it, we don't need the capacitor either, so that's quite happy like that. And yeah, there it is. And I'm really tired now and I'm just gonna... I don't know why, I must have had at least 18 hours of sleep and I'm still whacked out, so...